we are again. Wow. This will be the second in uh, the new series that I like to call Island Time. Decided for the next like couple wines, I just wanted to give people some insight onto the the region of wine that uh, I kind of came up in. Decided to go with something sparkling. And we're going to do one of the, I believe, four, three? Three or four, Charm de Lille. Uh, this is the one from Unsworth uh, Vineyards. Uh, the newly acquired by Kendall Jackson. Ooh, I wanna get that California money now. Uh, first, let's talk about the absolute clusterfuck that this label is. This is a hot fucking mess. Uh, Charm de Lille. So this was an attempt by uh, Avril Creek, uh, Unsworth, I believe Enrico uh, was involved. No, I don't believe. I know they were involved, uh, which is wild to me. Uh, and they, they wanted to have like a, an Appalachian wine. Uh, and so what they decided they were going to adopt as their uh, flagship was fucking Charmat Method for some reason? So yeah, they all pooled their shit together. Um, they bought a couple Charmat tanks. They share the equipment. Um, and they they bang a couple of these out. It is BCVQA. No mention of uh, varieties in bottle. Uh, although it could be hidden somewhere on this fucking Where's Waldo ass label. So I honestly don't know. Oh, if you're not familiar, Charmat is the same uh, method of production as your uh, Prosecco, for example, as opposed to your traditional method. Um, uh, Charmat, it's uh, basically highly specialized pieces of equipment. Um, the tank, basically, it allows you to, um, instead of doing individual bottle fermentations, you can do a full batch secondary, and uh, that say, obviously saves a lot of time. Uh, and it obviously takes the uh, importance of the surly in each bottle away. You're you're not trying to create a, uh, a wine driven by its autolytic characteristics. You're trying to create something that's maybe a little more flirty, flirty, and fun. The trick, if you've never opened a, a bottle of wine normally, I know most of you. Let's be real. All we're doing is we're sabering now. You know, so. Uh, you've uh, unscrewed the cage. Some people like to leave it on, I don't. So I'm a fucking rebel. Uh, but then you take your little cloth here. And the trick is to keep having a hard time with the eye line, guys. Some of you are like, look at the lens, and it's weird for me. It's... Anyway, you take your little cloth, you put it on there, and the trick is to open it as absolutely quietly as possible. None's heart is what I've heard, so here we go. Okay, it's not a bit, it like, every time I do the swirly swirly and then I stick my nose in it, if there is something that I find off-putting, I will just stop. And, uh, oh. Okay, it's starting to blow off a little bit, but for a while there, it really had that, like, gym sock, like, now it's kind of turning into more of a nuttiness and I can kind of get behind that, so. You know, after all that shit I said about uh, not an autolytically driven wine, and now here we are getting those fucking typical aromas of autolyzed yeast. It, no, it's it's bad vanilla, is what it smells like. It's beaver ass. Oh, heinous. Okay, like I like ass. Said, but let's fucking chill out. Okay, okay. It's early. It's early when I'm shooting this. My palate just might not be ready for that. Ooh, that is heavily, heavily, heavily malic. Like, just like crazy. Like, um, 
biting into the most unripe crab apple um, without the bitterness. The bitterness isn't there. Maybe crab apple isn't right. It's like, yeah, it's chilling out a lot. And that's obviously, I mean, that's what acid does. Your mouth acclimates, but woo. Very, very one note. It's extremely clean. I do like that about it. That's one of those beautiful things that that malic acid does, right? Is it just keeps things nice and focused. It's straight, it's to the point. Um, I will admit I have had a lot of Charme de Lille. Um, being someone on Vancouver Island, I have hated the vast, vast, vast majority of it. I am, I wonder how much should I spend on this? Should be like 18 bucks. I Like, as far as I'm concerned, Charmat Method is basically soda pop with some alcohol added to it. it. We shouldn't be spending that much money on it. There's no riddling, there's no disgorging. You kind of have to swallow the equipment, especially when you're splitting it with like four fucking other wineries, guys. Anyway, I'm sure the price probably appeared right there. That this would be a great sacrificial wine at a New Year's Eve party or like a birthday party or something like that. Uh, I uh, This is another one of those really expecting to absolutely hate it. Came in, thought it was perfectly fine, really crisp. And this wasn't just me expecting to hate it because, you know, I looked at the label and was like, mm, there's a bird on it. This was me having had this wine's previous releases before from this exact producer and thinking quite lowly of them. Um, and this is a significant step up in quality of this product. Uh, I still think it's a waste of effort. Uh, I think it's a waste of energy for Vancouver Island when we have traditional methods. Um, we have Zanata, for Christ's sake. Uh, Blue Grouse is putting out a perfectly serviceable traditional method sparkling in numbers that are way too small to satisfy the market. Um, who else is, I mean, there's my previous place of employment. Um, that does like a brute that is absolutely earth shattering. Um, th th there's like all this traditional method stuff. We grow Pinot Noir for fuck's sake. What are we doing screwing around with this? Um, that being said, it's fine. I just want to see it disappear. I don't know. Here's what I'm gonna. Here's what I'm gonna say. Here's what I'm gonna say. Don't buy it. But your friend offers you a glass. Yeah, fucking drink up. Uh, probably good mimosa wine. Google that. I am so, so sorry. Vanilla beaver ass. Google it, I dare you.